Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm a recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Very quick uh, diary today, really a story that I have covered uh, already a couple weeks ago here. And uh, this is the need to run an ad blocker if you are using Google. It has become uh, so bad about uh, malware being advertised if you're trying uh, to search for software download sites. In particular, some open source projects were recently hit, like for example, OBS Studio, VLC, Audacity, the software i'm using here to record this podcast all of uh, these uh, software packages uh, were hit by lookalike sites that uh, weren't just sort of organic search results but paid ads uh, with uh, google so there is really no good alternative right now because it can be very difficult to distinguish valid from invalid search results For example, for Audacity, the valid site is audacityteam.org, not just audacity.org or audacity.com. So very possible for an attacker to come up with something like audacity-team and such. That's the type of lookalike domains that you often see here. They're not using fancy things like international characters and such, just the variations of the valid domain name in order to trick you into downloading malicious software. On Twitter, Malware Hunter team has uh, sort of taken a lead here in uncovering many of these uh, fake sites and uh, they daily almost uh, publish new sites that are impersonating uh, valid uh, software open source or commercial and then the malware is being advertised via Google Ads. And well, uh, password managers are in the news again and not in a good way. Uh, This time it's uh, Norton LifeLock's uh, turn. Uh, The password manager that uh, Norton LifeLock uh, uses is accessible via a web page and well requires just a username and password. Imagine that, that some users apparently are reusing passwords. If there is one spot where you don't want to 100% rely on just a user pick passwords. It's probably password managers, as we have seen with recent breaches of password manager data. But apparently that's what happened here at Norton. They haven't really sort of made a big public announcement about this, but notified individual customers and Google, and that's what I'll link to, has a cash notification that was sent apparently to the state of Vermont. And lucky you if you are affected by this and lost all of your passwords because you didn't really figure out how to set a second factor that apparently you can't really set up uh, with Norton LiveLock. At least you got free credit reporting out of it. And opposed to the open source software security mailing list has details including a proof of concept exploit about a new vulnerability in the Linux kernel. It's a stack based buffer overflow in NF tables. NF tables being the replacement for IP tables in the Linux kernel and it's locally exploitable in order to gain privilege escalation but can also be used remotely to reveal some memory. It does require layer two access because you need a specific VLAN attacks in order to exploit the vulnerability. So not super easy to exploit, but apparently it has been in the kernel for a couple years. It was discovered in the latest release candidate, but has already been in the kernel for a while. So older versions are vulnerable as well. Well, uh, wait for a patch to come out on this one. I don't rate this as an emergency by any means, but uh, definitely something you should patch as soon as possible. And security researcher David Pototsky uh, did find an interesting uh, vulnerable default setting in many MSI motherboards. The problem here is secure boot. The 
idea behind Secure Boot is that the motherboard will only boot operating systems that are signed with a trusted certificate. But even after enabling Secure Boot on these motherboards, you can still boot any image. The problem here is that there is a second setting in addition to just enabling secure boot that basically tells the motherboard what to do if secure boot fails. And uh, the option that's enabled here right now by default in these affected MSI motherboards is to always execute the image even if it fails the certificate check. This second setting is also uh, not visible to the operating system. So the operating system believes it was booted using a secure uh, boot. No response from MSI yet on this issue. It doesn't necessarily require sort of a firmware update or anything like this. You just may want to check that setting in case you are relying on secure boot. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And thanks also to all of those who keep recommending this podcast and keep leaving good reviews. Keep it going. And thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.